Okay, we move on now. If you've stuck with uh, the lectures up to this point, you're about to be rewarded because we are done with our basic uh, elementary study of uh, scalars, vectors, and tensors and how to represent them. We're now going to plunge into the meat of continuum mechanics itself. Specifically, we're going to start by considering kinematics. All right, so here is our continuum body. We're now going to talk about what it means to, uh, what it means to have motion on this body, right? Uh, how do we describe it? How do we analyze it? All right, and of course, remember that we, we always talk of this body uh, as being embedded in some region in space, right? We talked about this at the very beginning of the series of lectures. And later on, we added in the notion that, well, if we're talking about this body, we're going to look at it being embedded in some region in space, okay? I'm taking the body away. But you remember that the body is embedded in this region in space. This is what we think of as representing the body. And we're going to talk about um, how to describe it mathematically with the help of this basis vector, right? This basis vector set, okay? All right. So, our study of kinematics can be divided into four subtopics, and those are uh, motion, right? Motion, and uh, we will see that the idea of motion also leads us to the idea of deformation. Next, we will study two different ways of describing motion and deformation. Uh, those are first the Lagrangian description okay and when we talk about the Lagrangian description of motion we are going to talk of also velocity what do we mean by velocity? How do we write it out in the so-called Lagrangian description? We will also look at acceleration, right? And these are ideas that you've definitely encountered before. We will revisit them and make them more precise in the so-called Lagrangian description. Next, we will also look at an alternate description of motion the so-called Eulerian description. Here too, we will look at motion, we will look at velocity and acceleration. Next, we are going to look at a at an object or a concept that comes about when we recognize that there are these two alternate ways of describing motion, right? Lagrangian and Eulerian. We will look at a time derivative, and we've already looked at a time derivative in the previous segment. But now, we're going to look at a time derivative of a very special kind that we will call the material time derivative. Okay? And of course, we will define it and so on once we've got through Lagrangian and Eulerian descriptions. Okay, so we're going to start now with motion and deformation. So let's start here with how do we talk about motion? So we go back to our body, right? Uh, we recall that this body consists of particles, and we also recall from our um, very first lecture 
that we had agreed that we are not actually going to talk about the physical material body in terms of its points. Okay, we're not going to look at the material points that this body is made up of and try to work with them. Instead, we're going to look at the, the idea of what is the configuration that the body occupies, right? So, we're going to think of the following. We're going to think that, well, the body is lying there. I pick it up. I put it here. And we remember now that by here, I mean this region in space, in three-dimensional space, right? And our set of basis vectors helps us actually define that region in space, okay? So, we have this notion of a configuration which is literally thought of as an embedding of a material body into some region in three-dimensional space, okay? So, let's write this down and uh, put it in here, okay? So, we have our uh, material body B, right? Uh, consists of particles P. Uh, let's say maybe Pi, right, where I runs over as many particles as we have, right? So we can say here I equals 1, 2, 3, up to some n, which could be a very large number. Okay, so the treatment that we have is one in which we say that we have our three-dimensional space, right? We have E1, E2, E3, right? And we take our body B, which may be, think of that as being the actual physical body, Right? We think now of embedding this body into some region in space. Okay, now I'm going to draw that body here, and because it has to occupy the same a sort of similarly shaped region in space, I'm going to try to draw something which has the same shape as that body, and hopefully I'll do a reasonable job of it. Well, it's okay. We'll have to live with that. Okay? But now, when I do this, I'm no longer talking of the body B. I'm talking of the region in three-dimensional space that the body occupies, okay? Because that's the very first uh, instance that I've brought up of embedding this body in some region in space, I'm going to denote it as omega, but I'm going to put a naught on it, okay? Because it's like omega, omega naught or omega zero. Now, we can think of this embedding I'm going to write a symbol for it. I'm going to call it kappa naught of B. This is simply an abstract and fairly formal way of saying that I'm taking a material body, material body, putting it in some region in space. Once I put it in some region in space, we will only talk of this region in space, we can forget about the body. Okay, we, everything that we describe about this region in space will essentially be representing what's happening to that body. Okay? And the way we do that formally is through this embedding map, kappa naught of B. Okay? And, and the naught simply ind indicates that it's the very first time we're talking of this embedding. Okay? Now, likewise, a particle, say, P on the body, okay, uh, has an embedding, right? We just particularize our map kappa to P, and that gives us kappa naught of that particular point P takes us to a position X, all right? So just as we embed the body B, we can apply that same map kappa naught to every single particle on the body, right? Every single material particle and talk of it occupying some position in space. So a material point here, right? has basically by my bringing the body over here and, and putting it in this region in space, equivalently I've taken that particle 
put it here in space, right? This position in space where my fingers are is uh, represented by x. When we have this basis, we know how to represent x very precisely. And that's all we need to know in order to talk about that material particle p, right? We forget that it's a material particle. It's now just a position in space, okay? This is our description of bodies. So omega naught, omega naught is a configuration of B, right, in R3, right? Now, we are going to tend to call um, one of these configurations that the body can occupy um, somewhat special, okay? Before we do that, let me say something more. So, we decided that we could represent the body here and as occupying some configuration. We de decided to call that configuration omega naught. Now, I want to define the motion of this body, okay? So, I would say that, well, it could be here, but then at some other time, the same body, is here. At yet another time, it is there. At a fourth time, it's here or there or there. Every one of these other configurations can be thought of as again a mapping of this material body to some new region in space, right? Right? So, we introduced one configuration kappa naught, but there are others possible, right? In particular, I could say, well, I could have, uh, I could make this one kappa 1 of B, all right? And this could be the body here, okay? I'm going to call this omega 1 and so on, right? Uh, let me see if I can do this without making it too messy, right? Um, I could do this. Let me call this omega 2. This mapping is kappa 2 of B, right? In general, I will have, as you can see, I can have as many of these configurations as I like, and I am going to denote a general configuration uh, as kappa sub t of B, okay? And that is the configuration I have now. And I will denote that configuration, which is just a region in, in R3. I'm going to denote it as omega t, okay? Now, the same thing can be said for positions of material particles, right? So P went to capital X here. Let me see. I'm going to try to draw just one more so that I don't get too messy a picture here, okay? So I'm going to say that this thing, this particle um, goes in this configuration, omega t. I'm going to say that that is the position. Now, I'm going to use lowercase x sub t, right? Of course, you know that that same material particle had positions along here too, right? So maybe I can draw them without the mapping. X1, uh, X2, and so on, okay? Now, essentially what we've done is to say that this body, it has some configuration, we, just because we, that was the very first configuration we had, we called it omega naught, all right? Another configuration, omega one, omega two, omega 3, so in general, omega sub t, right? Now, these configurations essentially define a motion of the body, right? 